Who is the, the, the market, to put it crassly, for, yeah. for horror? Uh, are there age groups that you're playing to? When I, when I began, I, I had an idea that it was mainly younger people. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's true anymore. And I think a lot of it has to do with the nature of the book. If the book is adult and sophisticated and has uh, the elements that readers look for in, uh, in fiction, then I think people of all kinds can read it. But generally, I think it's uh, 18 to 25 or 15 to 25, something like that. 15 to 25. Can you, can you see that in the line outside the theater? That, uh, just For the film, in the case of movies, it's, it's yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Although it's it's a lot tougher to scare young people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <clears throat> it's pretty hard to shock them, which yeah. is, I think, probably one of the elements that you that at least has to be lurking around in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and it's also, I think, just on an ex on an experiential level. Uh, I don't. I think the, the more experience you have with things, I, or, I, I don't know, maybe I'm going too far off the deep end. Maybe it's just that uh, for those of us that were around before there were all the answers that there are now, there were more fears. So maybe right. that. Mm. I think young people tend to uh, uh, grab onto horror in a more natural way because it does have that quality of the roller coaster ride, uh, mm. the sort of big harmless scare. Uh, you don't see too many little old ladies getting off the bullet or Magic Mountain, that sort of thing. And there aren't very many, uh, say, uh, senior citizens that uh, use their golden age of pass to go see Zombie or Piranha or something like that. Uh, they want to see something else. I, I think that young people can go see a horror movie or pick up a horror novel and not feel personally assaulted by it because they feel safe in their own sense of health and and well-being and at the same time I think that a lot of kids feel like outsiders um, they may feel a little monstrous themselves and they can go see uh, a movie like for instance Night of the Living Dead uh, and they may feel that you know that they have some problems with their peers or whatever it is but the sheriff in that movie somebody says well uh, chief uh, are they are they hard to kill and the sheriff says ah no they're they're dead. They're all messed up. <laughs> you know? right. That makes a kid feel kind of good inside. What about the so-called uh, moral content of horror um, films and books? Uh, do you ever consciously uh, put one in or concern yourself with that at all? I think it's, in general, horror uh, is uh, almost by tradition highly moral. Mm -hmm. yeah, in in fact, so. to the detriment of a lot of it, yeah. because it, it, people spend too much time bringing things back to a kind of normality, which mm -hmm. possibly shouldn't have existed in the first <laughs> place. But um, I think that uh, it's uh, always been viewed as allegory, and there's always a kind of a, of a moral statement underneath it somewhere. I mean, yeah. we're always exorcising. Uh, yeah. Something that's either been and, a part of the us monster or gets destroyed. The monster gets destroyed mm -hmm. unless you want to make a sequel. Yeah. Then you <laughs> it's a <laughs> celebration of uh, daily life, really, mm -hmm. because when the intruder comes in or the uh, bizarre element comes into daily life, then it's frightening. And must be pushed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that's so unsettling about Rosemary's Baby is the fact that uh, a kind of uh, no norm normality surfaces again at the end uh, that makes the reader very uneasy because this is motherhood and yet uh, the child is the devil <laughs> or the son of the devil. Well, I, I do know. like to keep a little element unreconstructed at the end, a little of the horror still loose because sure. I think that makes it work sort of stay in the mind more. Yes, so I, would, I always like that. I, I, quite tied you, up. you realize there are only 30 pages left. You don't want everything to come right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary's Baby was really landmark in that way, I think, yeah. in terms of... Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, really turned a corner in terms of, of uh, as you said, a new, a new normality at the end, rather than what was normal in the first 20 pages, mm -hmm. coming back to that. And where, and, um, when we realize what's happened and uh, that the child is not going to be used for a human sacrifice as Rosemary has thought all along, at that point I begin rooting for Rosemary to throw the kid out a window. <laughs> uh, and there's that, that moment in the book 
uh, where there's silence and Rosemary says, you're rocking him too fast. <laughs> and you say, oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know she's going to just uh, take over and raise the kid. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't help noticing that three of you are what might be termed heavy smokers. Can you relate that to fear <laughs> in any way, you know, or lack of it? Well, there's an lack of it, I think. <laughs> well, I always Self tell my Self wife that uh, anybody can quit smoking, but it takes a real man to face lung cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Does he believe that? <laughs> no, neither do I. Some of your warps are still with me. <laughs> Well, uh, there's some formula, I can never remember which way it goes, that uh, tragedy is pessimistic op optimism and comedy is optimistic pessimism, or is it the other way around? <laughs> uh, is horror writing uh, optimistic finally? Uh, yes, yeah. Stanley yes, Kubrick made is. an interesting remark in, uh, somewhere yeah. that uh, he had to think a minute, and then he said, well, the fact that there are uh, ghosts in so much of it indicates that it m at least points to uh, survival of death and that's optimistic, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But usually unless the author is unduly perverse, the heroine survives or the hero and mm -hmm. is a better person for the experience. Yeah. So. It's optimistic. It's uh, uh, affirming, really. Yeah. Most of them when you come down to the conclusion yeah. that London can survive Dracula. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> You'd think maybe that humor would, would not be compatible with, with horror. But uh, everybody knows, I guess, the opposite is true. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the scariest movies I ever saw was not one of the s supposedly scary movies, uh, but was um, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Sure. That was a wonderful yeah. movie. Sure. <laughs> there were some really the chilling the moments. It's very really frightening. Hope. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, well, Hitchcock says you have to follow uh, all that tension with a good laugh. I think you can shuffle it right in there and put them uh, in the same stew, you know. Yeah. And, um, I think it allows it to breathe, you know. Yeah. To, uh, there's an air hole in there. Yeah. Well, if you go see a, a horror movie and something really frightening happens, the audience will scream, but always following that scream is this nervous laughter, uh -huh. which yeah. says uh, to your seatmate, uh, I scream mostly because I needed a stretch in my <laughs> chest. I wasn't, wasn't really scared. scared. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so th th they work together. Uh, yeah, there's a big difference, too, between startle and and uh, creating real fear, and and most of mm -hmm. the effect. And I'm, mm -hmm. again, I'm talking movies more than you guys have a lot tougher time because mm -hmm. you don't have sound and you can't <laughs> make something jump out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a lot easier to startle people with film. And uh, unfortunately, you mm -hmm. see a lot of that. You see a lot of films that rely almost totally on that kind of thing. And that's always the nervous laughter kind yeah. of. That's the real laugh in the dark experience. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what jumps out of the next corner. Yeah. That it's doesn't count. Different. It, doesn't, it doesn't count as too easy. It, it's very yeah. easy. And, uh, Anybody can do that just by cutting the right way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a quick movement synchronized but it's with very a loud tempting. sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's part of the traditional experience. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's great. Fun. Dawn of the Dead is really just that. I mean, Dawn of the Dead, if, uh, if there's any kind of an ex fear experience that comes off it, it's much subtler or more intellectual. Other than that, it's just kind of a celebration of that kind of experience. <laughs> <laughs> Because that is fun. I mean, that's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, what you can do in a film and can't. Uh, I, I think it's a Polanski film in which a character moves the bathroom uh, medicine chest mirror, Repulsive. and just for an instant, it registers that someone is standing in the room mm -hmm. over Too here, and I, it gives me goose pimples as I think of it. Mm -hmm. Now, could you write that same thing? Um, and get the same effect? That thing I think you could. There are other things that I don't think you can do mm -hmm. very effectively. There's that thing that De Palma does at the end of the film of Carrie, yeah. where the hand shoots out of the ground and, uh, and grabs Amy Irving. And uh, it, it's not in the book, and I think if it was in the book that it would have nowhere near the effect that it has in the movie. Reading the words, sure. suddenly a hand shot out of the ground is not as scary as That's right. the word. Yeah. You'd have to do it another way, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be an interesting exercise, wouldn't it? To exorcise. <laughs> exorcise. We have to get that button out of here. <laughs> exorcise it. Uh, well, th there's a lot more to talk about, and we're going to have to uh, talk about a lot more of it uh, next time. So, uh, to George Romero, Peter Straub, Ira Levin, and Stephen King, and myself, we'll join you tomorrow night. Are you afraid to join us? <laughs> Don't be afraid.